Om Magana Tamandasi again again in Salakaya Chakshri Malatan Janita Zamai Sigurve Namaha. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutali. Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namani. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pachani. Nervasesha Shunyuari Paska Chade Satar. Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Sri Adaita Gadana Sivasadi Go Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Ram Hare Ram 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 This uh, account, historical account of Maya Dhanava is very interesting because it shows that everyone, even the greatest demigod, like Lord Shiva, derives their power from Lord Vishnu. Throughout history, there are many, many accounts of fights between the demons and the demigods, and in general, the demigods are always victorious. Once, when the demigods fought against the Asuras, the Asuras were defeated, and therefore they took shelter of a great demon called Mayadhanava, the greatest of the demons. Mayadhanava prepared three residences, one of iron, one of silver, and one of gold. Lohika. And these residences were filled with uncommon paraphernalia for fighting. They were especially known because they made the people within them invisible. Then the, de the demons, remembering their hostility with the demigods and their recent defeat, they took advantage of their position and began to vanquish the three worlds. Thereafter, when the demons began to destroy the higher planetary systems, the rulers of those systems went to Lord Shiva and fully surrendered to him and said, Dear Lord Shiva, we demigods living in the three worlds are about to be vanquished. We are your followers. Kindly help us. The most powerful Lord Shiva assured them, Do not be afraid. Lord Shiva then fixed his arrows on his bow and released them toward the three residences occupied by the demons. The arrows released by Lord Shiva appeared like fiery beams emanating from the sun globe and covered the three residential airplanes, which then could no longer be seen. Thus attacked by Lord Shiva's golden arrows, all the demoniac inhabitants of those three dwellings lost their lives and fell down. Oh. Then the great mystic Maya Dhanava dropped the demons into a nectarine well that he had created. Immediately, when the dead bodies came in touch with the nectar, their bodies became invincible to thunderbolts. Now, endowed with great strength, they got up like lightning penetrating clouds. Seeing Lord Shiva very much aggrieved and disappointed at his failure, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu, considered how to stop this nuisance created by Maya Dhanava. The Lord made Lord Brahma into a calf, and he himself became a cow. And at noon they entered the residences and drank all the nectar in the well. Although the demons could see the calf and cow, and despite the, but despite the illusion created by the energy of Lord Vishnu, the demons could not forbid them. The great mystic Maya Dhanava became aware that the calf and cow were drinking the nectar, and he could understand this to be the unseen power of providence. Thus he spoke words of great wisdom to the demons who were grievously lamenting. Maya Dhanava said, What has been destined by the Supreme Lord 
for oneself, for others, or for oneself and others cannot be undone anywhere or by anyone. It cannot be undone even if one is a demigod, a demon, a human being, or anyone else. And the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the Supreme Controller. He controls even the greatest of demigods like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva. What to speak of ordinary living beings like ourselves. Therefore, what the Lord decrees is sure to be. Maya Dhanava thought, however I plan, you plan or both of us plan, the Lord has planned what will be. No one's plan can be successful without Krishna's sanction. And we all have practical experience that we, we plan so many things. The government plans so many things. From the highest to the lowest, there is planning. But what is, is only what is sanctioned by the Lord. Therefore, a devotee surrenders to the Lord and says, thank you, Krishna, for now as it is. It could not be as it is without your sanction. And if you sanction anything, it is for your devotee's good. If it were not, how could we say Krishna is all good? Krishna is all powerful. He is omniscient, all knowing. And he is everywhere present. How could he not do the best of all possibilities for every living entity at every moment? Our only responsibility is to surrender to him by saying, Krishna, I'm willing to use now as it is in the best way you give me the intelligence. Not only am I willing, but I'm confident you have a perfect plan and I'll be patient to understand and to persevere. In the history that we're telling, it says that after Maya Dhanava said that wonderful bit of wisdom, Thereafter, Lord Krishna, by his own potency, equipped Lord Shiva with all the necessary paraphernalia and sent him into battle. It's very interesting that Lord Shiva could only fight successfully when he was empowered by Lord Krishna. Therefore, it says, when Lord Shiva was fully equipped in this way, he sat down on the chariot with his arrows and bow to fight with the demons. Similarly, devotees sh should depend on Krishna for empowerment to face every situation they, they, that comes moment by moment. The devotee must serve the Lord sincerely, but he must know that Krishna is always in the background to protect him, and, to, and if need be, to equip him fully to fight with the enemy. Prabhupada used to say, one who has Krishna has everything. So when the devotee is confident that Krishna is behind him, Krishna is empowering him, he has no fear, he has no scarcity. Are there any questions? In Bhaktivedanta, if, if uh, Maya Dhanaba was able to speak such... Uh, wonderful words of wisdom, uh, why is he still counted amongst the uh, demons? Because he served those who were against Krishna consciousness, were against surrender to Krishna, were against the, the desire of the Lord. He served the interest of the asuras. Krishna gives each and every one of us so much facility so much knowledge, so much ability, but he also gives us the independence whom we will serve with that opulence. We show our love for Krishna when we use everything in his service. We show our love for Maya when we don't. We show our love for Maya when we try to serve ourselves, when we try to enjoy, because we are not the enjoyer. Krishna is the only enjoyer. Any other question? How can we feel, Srila Bhaktivad, how can we feel Krishna is always behind us? Faith cometh by hearing. 
We just heard it from the scripture. You just go on hearing and you'll develop that faith. There are nine processes of devotional service. What's first? Sravanam. We have to hear. You cannot chant unless you've heard. You cannot worship unless you have heard. Everything is dependent on hearing. I have a question that uh, how do I know to serve Krishna and what is his plan for me? How do I serve Krishna? And what is his plan for me? Or what is plan for her? Therefore Krishna has come personally for you in the form of your spiritual master. <laughs> if you have a question how to serve, you ask your spiritual master. How I can know what, how can I serve? You're part of this temple, then you serve the authorities of this temple. Madhusudan, anyone he appoints for you to be guided by. Thank you very much.